Um, so I wanted to show more succinct proof of the product rule, I know, or, and the chain rule, rather. Uh, but we're going to use the product rule, so that means we must prove the product rule. Here's a standard product rule um, where we're going to let h equal h of x equal f of x times g of x. And we're going to find the derivative of h of x, which means we must find the derivative of this. If you see, look here, they go by the standard. Instead of h, they're using delta x, which is the same as h. You just wherever you see delta x, just realize that's the same as h. And they're saying we're going to add uh, h to the f of x and h to the g of x. We're going to multiply them together, because that's really what derivatives are. And we're going to subtract the normal f of x times g of x over what is essentially h. And then they use a little bit of math trickery here. I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger. And the math trickery they use here is right there. They add, they subtract and add a number. And you might say, uh, can you do that in math? Yeah. If I have 7 plus 3, and I'm trying to show that it equals 10, I can add 5 and subtract 5 in the middle. And this will still be equal to 10. You'll see this kind of math trickery all the time. For instance, if I add 7 and subtract 7 and then add 3, this still all adds up to 10, but maybe for some reason I need this 14. We do this a lot in completing the square. In completing the square, if we're trying to find what square will make this, we realize that it's this, but it creates an unwanted plus 4. And we often just subtract 4 so that we can have this in there to create that without the 4. In this case, the number they're subtracting is totally fictitious. It's f of x times g of x plus h. Now you might say, you know, how can they, that's not a number. Yep, essentially it's any term you can add. So long as it's the same term, notice they're subtracting it first and then they're adding it, but it's the same term. f of x times g of x plus change in x, which is h. And it's still a number because that will come up with a result that is a number. It's the y value in those situations, which will be a number. So there's nothing unique about it. They do it so that they can factor out. Uh, let's just focus on this left side of it. They're going to factor out this part of it. They're, they notice that you have a g x plus delta x on this left side. So they factor it out right here. When you factor it out, you're left with f of x plus h minus f of x, which is right there. When you have f of x plus h minus f of x, that is the definition. And remember, delta x is just h here. That's the definition of the derivative of f of x. We already know that's going to come up with the derivative of f of x. They do the same thing on the right side. On the right side, the thing they've created here is f of x times g of x plus h, essentially, but it's a plus. And it has f of x in common. So they factor out that f of x, and they're left with g of x plus x delta x, which is h, minus g of x, which is the definition of the derivative of g of x. So here we have the derivative of f of x times g of x. And here we have, well, times g of x plus x. And then here we have f of x times g of x. So the question is, what is that going to create? Well, uh, the limit of this, as you approach 0, uh, you can remove it as a multiplier. So we're going to just say, OK, I'm going to remove this entirely in front, but it's still it's got its own limit as x approaches 0. Well, g of x, and you might say, well, how can I do that? Well, first, you're right. First, I have to separate these into two separate limits. So this is its own limit, and then this side here becomes its own limit. Once you have that, you can then pull it out as a multiplier, because this can just pull out front so long as you keep the limit. 
Well, the limit of this when g of x, when delta x reaches 0, in other words, when h reaches 0, is just g of x. So what we're left with is the derivative of f of x times g of x plus the f of x times the derivative of g of x. This is a very uh, unique proof of it because this is one of the few proofs that adds and subtracts a number, but it is very easy to see that it's true. Using this, knowing that the product rule is pr true, I want to prove the chain rule. And I want to prove the chain rule by taking a very simple derivative as an example. x squared squared, right? x squared squared, which knowing my, sorry, I just want to have it as squared. Knowing my uh, rules for exponents, I know that's simply x to the 4, and I also know, using the power rule, that the derivative of that is 4x to the 3rd. So that's the derivative, and that's the actual product. But let's now ignore that and look at this. The chain rule says that I have to bring the 2 down in front, lower the exponent, and multiply by 2x. And I know we're I'm cheating on the chain. I'm just doing the chain rule first, just to show you the chain rule. I multiply the 2s, I get 4. And I multiply the x squared times the x, I get 4x cubed. So the chain rule would appear to work. But how do we sort of prove that the chain rule works? Well, I'm going to let u, u equal x squared. u equals x squared right in the middle. Okay, which means I'm left with, if I replace this, u squared, right? And what is u squared? u squared is simply u times u. It's the same function times itself. If you want, we can also let, you know, f of x equal x squared. We just let f of x equal x squared. doesn't really matter. But I'm going to stick with u, okay? It works with f of x as well. Well, u is simply u times u. And we know if we want the derivative of u times u, we can use the product rule, which is simply u times u prime plus u prime times u. Well, I can rearrange these multipliers any way I want. It's really This is really the same as u times u prime. Since the u's are the same functions, it's clear I have the same thing twice. So really, this is 2 times u times u prime. Well, here's where I replace the x squared back. So I'm, I know that it's just simply 2 times x squared in here. But what is the derivative of x squared? It's 2x. What's 2 times 2? 4. What's x times x? x cubed. We've essentially shown that the chain rule works if we take the same, uh, well, it's the, it sh proves the chain rule works. It's really just showing a product rule. Now, the nice thing about this is that it doesn't matter what number is up here. If we substitute the interior of any product for u, we can show that the chain rule works. Let's take a, something a bit more complicated. 3x squared plus 6x squared. And I know I'm taking squared the easy way out, but you can do it with a cube. Um, if I take that and I just let u equal the interior, right, I'm still left with u squared, which is simply u times u, which is u times the product uh, the derivative u and the derivative u times u, which is still just two of them. And then I can still just replace back and discover, okay, well, this is the chain rule over and over again. It's the chain rule. And all I really have to figure out is the derivative of this. And it's 6x plus 6. And multiply it out. Okay, well, let's do that. It's 6x plus 6. And it's multiplying 6x squared plus 12x. 
that's right. And this was 6x squared, was it? Or did I, what did I do there? Oh yeah, so that's the derivative. Plus x, there we go. When I multiply this out, I get 36x cubed plus 36x squared plus 6 times 12, 72x squared. And what is uh, 72 plus 36? It's 108x squared. And then 12x times 6, it is plus 72x. So according to the chain rule, this will be the derivative. Assuming I didn't make any math problems. Let's see if that's true. Let's see if we're going to end up with 36x cubed. plus 108x squared plus 73, uh, 72x. So that's a cubed and a squared. Well, we can just expand this. Expanding and I get 9x to the 4 right? plus 18x cubed plus 18x cubed, which is 36x cubed plus 36x squared. And that's a cubed. Okay, taking the derivative of this, I get 4 times 9, 36x cubed plus 3 times 36, which is 108x squared. plus, and this one was 36, times 2, 72x. So this was the expanded polynomial, and this was using the chain rule. And I think that's a fairly good explanation of the chain rule working. And you might say, well, that's easy for squared. You'll discover even if you cube it, the chain rule can still be produced into the product rule. You make u equal to your internal you get u cubed, and if you study the product rule, you'll learn that u cubed's uh, derivative is u times u times u prime plus u times u prime times u plus u prime times u times u. Well, these are all the same. So you get 3 u times u times u prime What's u squared? u times u? u squared. So really what you get is 3u squared times u prime, which means that anything cubed, look at that, it's still the chain rule. You're taking the derivative of the interior, and you're doing the 3 comes down, and you're lowering the value by 2. So I think that's a pretty elegant proof of the chain rule, better than most.